Hey everybody, Cindy Balkum, Knee Deep in Bluegrass, presented by Low Vintage Instrument Company. Here with my buddies from Town Mountain, we're gonna have some lively conversation. I know these guys, so I know it's gonna be lively, but I wanna introduce you to Robert Greer, Phil Barker, Jesse Langley, Zach Smith, and Bobby Britt. Town Mountain at the very latest recording is New Freedom Blues, it's doing well. And that one lyric of the title track goes, start my morning in the middle of the afternoon. I want to know who is the earliest riser in this bunch? This guy right here. Jesse. I might be. Or Bobby. Yeah. Bobby is probably the earliest and then, I, and then I'm right after him. Okay, yeah. okay. So you're not the typical, stereotypical sleep all day musicians and pick all night. I used to be. Oh. I'm sort of transitioning to a, an earlier schedule. <laughs> okay. You'll still pick all night, but you're going to get up early. Oh, well, yeah. good deal. Well, as I said, New Freedom <laughs> Blues is the current release and, and it's a great one. You know, being out in Nashville, I felt fortunate to get to see your station in official release party and what a great mm -hmm. show that was. And Brian Sutton came in to join mm -hmm. you on some tunes and, and so much fun. Robert, let's just start with you. How is this recording different from some of the previous Town Mountain releases? Well, one of the, one of the main differences is that um, I sing lead on less tunes considerably and I do more tenor singing on this record, and uh, <clears throat> there's that's that's one of the that's one of the biggest differences. Um, there's drums pretty much throughout the whole record, and uh, we recorded at a studio we've never recorded a full length studio at. We use a different producer than we've ever used. And there's lots of differences actually, but ultimately it's us doing our thing and writing original music and playing performing original. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Phil, a lot of times the mandolin chop for a typical bluegrass band provides the percussive element. How, how did you like having the drums to complement what you do with the band? I mean, it was a re relief for me. <laughs> All the, pre the pressure was off in that respect because uh, Miles Miller, the, the, the buddy that played drums, was just so in the pocket that you, everybody could kind of relax, me especially. Do you ever get a chance to carry him with you to shows and do that on, on occasion, stage? On occasion, we've done done a few shows with him, and it's always a lot of fun. He's just so good. Jesse, you like playing with the percussion too? I do. I mean, you know, the banjo is kind of cousin to drums, so there's a little hard feeling there on my part. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's great. In all honesty, the material on New Freedom Blues is is kind of all over the place, and I think it's the first album that we actually decided to play the tunes at their face value as opposed to try to make them fit in a five-piece bluegrass band in the parameters of bluegrass music. So yeah. having Miles on drums through the whole project really let the songs kind of take the shape I think they were originally intended to take. Right. Yeah. And it has to be your style and your feel and Zach, tell us about choosing material. Do you all do that as a group? Do you uh, each one bring some different material to the table? How, how does that process work? Sure, the, the songwriting in this band is sitting on this nice leather couch and, and it's... Well, it's, 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 now it is. And it's, and it's still, <laughs> yeah, and now, now it's... It, uh, but, you know, the songwriting in this band is so strong and, and everybody brings ideas to the table and. I remember when I first got on with these guys, I I was in like my second rehearsal and they were they were running New Freedom Blues and they asked for my input like right there and I was like, well I guess I'm doing this thing. So it's it's definitely a, a team effort when it comes to arrangements. Um, and and I guess it's a team effort when it comes to lyrics in general, you know, these guys just bounce ideas off one another and it's it's really cool to be a part of. Yeah. What's your name again, sir? <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, <laughs> uh, Bobby, you're just an, an incredible fiddle player, and I know what you bring to Town Mountain just really enhances this overall feel. You all as a group, it always amazes me, you're able to have a contemporary take on such an old traditional sound and to me it's amazing i don't know quite how you pull that off what's your take on that whole feel that that town mountain has that's a really good question and a uh, tough one to answer in some ways i th i think the 
the biggest, the easiest way to put it would be collectively there's a, a big emphasis and a, a love of traditional bluegrass and we've studied it um, uh, to a degree for sure but then we also all love so many different types of music and that influences our our bluegrass sound yeah. I think um, like I love Celtic old time jazz hip hop you name it the Grateful Dead um, and I try to not like play that music but I try to incorporate stuff I love about it into the into our sound Mm -hmm. There's tunes that Bobby Bobby writes as well, and uh, he, he's he's written I don't know how many fiddle tunes, instrumental tunes that have been on I think three different records at this point, right? Yeah. And <clears throat> he does a great job. If you go back and listen to Four Miles on our Leave the Bottle record, you'll hear a lot of that kind of British Isles stuff coming through. Yeah. That. That's not bluegrass fiddle tune for sure, but you'll hear the influences. Yeah. Well, in addition to the bluegrass artists that you've listened to coming up, outside of that genre or country, what um, are some of the other major influences as we go down the line? Give me like a major influence uh, to you, Robert. Uh, the Grateful Dead, um, Ronnie Van Zant, Leonard Skinner, um, Keith Whitley, Merle Haggard. There's a lot, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Phil. I would think it's I think as far as like bands going today, uh, Tyler Childers and his band is, is an influence just on like the kind of the attitude and the, the freedom that those guys play with, mm -hmm. and on top of the great songwriting and stuff like that. So, in the past, uh, uh, Towns Van Sant's a big influence of mine, and Jimmy Martin. Yeah, somewhere in between there. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse? Uh, I love Little Feet, one of my favorite bands of all time. The band, one of my favorite bands of all time. I like the songwriting uh, in both of those bands a lot. Mm -hmm. um, all over the place. I mean, you said don't mention bluegrass or country, but I'm so I'll mention John Harford because he's also, <laughs> well, also he's kind of a little bit of everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he could not be contained in, yeah. in one box, that's for sure. I love, I love his music and his songwriting and uh, Roger Miller, big Roger Miller. Oh, absolutely, Zach. Oh, being a bass player, I'd have to say uh, the Wood Brothers. Oh, is, yeah. Is a, is a big influence of mine. Cool, cool. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention one of my truly biggest influences is in this room today, Terry Bachman. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. I know he appreciates that. Um, you know, any time that uh, you all are doing any of the special showcases at IBMA, I know the last two or three years when Bluegrass Country has their Thursday showcases that they do uh, on their station there out of D.C., and they always say, Cindy, are there any of these you want to host? I always say, Town Mountain, can I please be there for Town Mountain? You all do such a, a great live set, it's energetic, it's entertaining, and I know out there with New Freedom Blues, you've been having a ball putting that music out there uh, in front of the crowds. Yeah. We love working with you too, Sandy. We you know what? Jazz. You guys are just awesome. I've been a fan for years and years, and so anytime that I get the chance to introduce you, whether it's a, a big festival stage or just in some, um, you know, more of those intimate settings uh, for some of the showcases. It's always just uh, such a fun time. And I know for the most part, you're from Western North Carolina, the Asheville area is where the band is based. Zach, I know you grew up in Boone. Mm -hmm. Bobby, you're living in Boston. Yeah. And uh, let, let's just briefly touch on geographically um, in terms of music stylings and 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 sounds and um, you know don't you find that when you travel all over the country you can hear different influence in terms of just the geographic sure. area yeah. with so what did it mean to you guys growing up in the western part of North Carolina well, I'm, I'm originally from southwest Georgia and uh, 
And so I think naturally part of our sound is just, just comes out of my, comes out of my mouth naturally. That is just kind of a country blues type of thing, you know? And that's, that has to do a lot with where I, where I'm, where my roots are, uh -huh. you know? We moved, my family moved to Brevard when I was 11 years old and, uh, and I started hearing more banjo music and more bluegrass then. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I mean, we're kind of from all across the spectrum where we're from. Jesse, where are you from? I'm from the state of Maine. So it's just a bit removed from Western North Carolina, but uh, I've been down there a long time now. But I, I, I didn't have bluegrass as part of my upbringing. You know, it wasn't obviously. It's not part of the culture. It's not a, it's not a big thing up north until you start to peel back the layers and you realize that in fact there is a scene and there are very talented musicians uh, that live up there. And I was fortunate enough to uh, start playing banjo when I was about 18 or so, and. Uh, just by chance, a guy about eight miles from where I grew up, and his name's Bill Smith, who was with a great band called uh, Bluegrass Supply Company. Um, he was a fantastic bluegrass musician, like banjo. If it had strings, he played it, and he played it really well, and he played it the way it should be played. And I just happened to live, you know, 10 minutes from this guy. And uh, so when I first started playing, I actually had access to somebody who knew the history of the music and how mm. it was played. And, and I, you know, it took me old and in the way to get introduced to bluegrass music, but immediately I was being shoveled Jimmy Martin and Bill Monroe. And, and those guys that play traditional bluegrass music up north, they, they respect it and um, emulate it similar to the people in the South, you know? That's awesome, yeah. that's awesome. Well, talk about some highlights maybe um, of last year and what you have coming up this year. Uh, I wanna highlight. For sure, for me, I think for all of us was uh, when we played our, played the Opry for the third time, and uh, and we got a knock on the door after our performance, and we just figured it was one of those one of those nice older ladies who was coming in there to get the steamer back and tell us kind of usher us on out the door, you know how they do, and and we opened the door. We said, "Come on in," and Charlie Daniels busts up in our in our in our green room. We're oh, like, how what the hell is going on? This is awesome. <laughs> and he came in and it was like he was a member of our band, had been there for 10 years, you know, I mean, how many green rooms has Charlie Daniels seen? 83 years old and crushing it. He walks in the door, one of the songs we played was, was Orange Blossom Special, and he was in the wings watching that. He walks in the door and he goes, I love your band, and points at Bobby Britton and goes, I hate you. <laughs> 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 he was the nicest guy. Oh, that's cool. So he was impressed with your Orange Blossom special. It sounds like it, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's a highlight for sure. It was cool. Looking ahead to this year, what are some cool things that you guys are just really looking forward to? Pickathon, Nelsonville Festival in Nelson, Nelson Ohio. Um, what are some what are some other things we're doing? Locking. Yeah, we have a pretty stacked festival schedule. I'm sure you know how it goes. That it ebbs and flows, and uh, the past couple of years have been kind of slower for us on the festival scene. But this year, it's it's pretty stacked. Good We're deal. Happy to get back out and, and be playing festivals every week. Good deal. Yeah. Outer Banks Bluegrass Festival. Yeah. Oh yeah, man, that's gonna be there. awesome. Is that Steve Dillon's deal? Does he put that on? Steve put that on. He's a big part of gotcha. the behind the scenes for sure. And you know, when you have that kind of atmosphere just with, you know how that stage is situated, you've got that natural backdrop of that beauty. I can't wait to see with it. With the kind of great music you guys do, that'll be a fun time for it sure. Well, it's always so great to, to visit with you all. Folks, if you don't have New Freedom Blues, Town Mountain, certainly encourage you to get that to where fine music is sold download it or when you see the band pick up an actual physical copy but uh guys best of luck to you could we talk you into doing a, a tune for us sure here? Awesome. well we'll be right back with a great song from town mountain from low vintage instrument company <laughs> Thank you. 
Say it a hundred times.